With all due respect to the Air Force, I believe that some of them will prove to be of interplanetary origin. It's I am here to discuss the so-called flying saucers. There have been a certain percentage of this volume of reports that have been made by credible observers of relatively incredible things. It is this group of observations that we now are attempting to resolve. May 11th, 1950, McMinnville, Oregon. Evelyn Trent is walking into her house from her farm when she notices a slow-moving metallic-shaped disc floating in the sky. She calls for her husband, Paul, who's inside. Paul comes outside and then races inside to find his camera. He returns and snaps two now famous images of the McMinnville UAP. According to his wife Evelyn, who first spotted the craft, quote, the object was coming in towards us and seemed to be tipped up a little bit. It was very bright, almost silvery, and there was no noise or smoke. The McMinnville photographs appeared in Life magazine and in newspapers across the country. Dr. William K. Hartman, an astronomer who was working as an investigator for the Condon Committee, a government-funded UFO research program based at the University of Colorado Boulder, wrote in reference to the McMinnville case, quote, This is one of the few UFO reports in which all factors investigated, geometric, psychological, and physical, appear to be consistent with the assertion that an extraordinary flying object, silvery, metallic, disc-shaped, tens of meters in diameter, and evidently artificial, flew within sight of two witnesses. Interestingly, in 1957, just seven years after the McMinnville photographs were captured, the Royal Air Force Flying Review magazine, aka RAF Flying Review, published in its July 1957 edition a photograph which appeared strikingly similar to that which was taken in Oregon. This photo, however, was allegedly captured by a French Air Force pilot taken while intercepting a radar UAP. The photo was apparently taken the very same year that this magazine was published, 1957, although many UFO researchers have wrongly cited this date as 1954. Although a controversy remains in the research community, one theory contends that this could be the same photo and it's maybe been retouched, although we must consider that the retouching skills were rather limited back in the 1950s before the advent of Photoshop. When it comes to the 1950 McMinnville photographs, we have an excellent evidence trail to follow. For example, we know the name of the individuals who captured these photographs, Paul and Evelyn Trent. We know that they're farmers. We know where their farm is in Oregon. We can actually go there. We can find the exact angle that Paul Trent captured these photographs. And so all of these little pieces actually go a long way in helping investigators determine whether or not this is a credible event. And the McMinnville incident is considered one of the most credible UAP events in modern history. When it comes to the 1957 French photograph, however, we don't have a sufficient evidence trail to follow. For example, we don't know the name of the French Air Force pilot who allegedly took this photograph. And in fact, it's theorized that this photograph could actually be a doctored version of what happened in McMinnville in 1950. However, without the sufficient evidence trail to follow, it's impossible to say one way or another. Was this a doctored photograph of what happened in the United States? Or is it possible that a French Air Force pilot actually saw a very similar craft in the skies of Europe? At this point, we don't know for sure. All we can do is marvel at the striking similarities between these two craft, or should I say craft, that have been seen. Whether or not this alleged 1957 photograph was actually taken in France, it is interesting to note that very similar craft were observed in France in the early 1950s. For example, in June 1951, the following is from a minute-by-minute -minute radio report the pilot delivered. Quote, I am turning toward the engine. The disc is tilting on itself and is moving off at increasing speed. Impossible to follow the object's climb. It is following and ascending trajectory at about a thousand kilometers an hour. Even stranger still, in 1952, many French people witnessed the same event. When a cigar-shaped UAP, accompanied by 30 disc-shaped objects, floated in the sky. According to the many witnesses, these smaller UAP dropped a white cotton-like substance which fell from the sky and covered the tree branches and the roofs of the houses. According to one of the witnesses, there appeared, quote, a cottony cloud of strange shape, above it a narrow cylinder, apparently inclined at a 45-degree angle. 
was slowly moving in a straight line toward the southwest. On October 27, 1954, just two years after what occurred in France, Italy would see a very similar event. The BBC would report that UFOs stopped play during a professional football match. Now this UAP event deserves far more attention than it's received because it was witnessed by literally tens of thousands of individuals. Just after halftime, the stadium allegedly fell eerily silent. Then a roar exploded in the crowd. The spectators were no longer watching football. They were all looking up at the sky, fingers pointing. The players themselves stopped playing football and the ball rolled to a standstill. According to one of the footballers who witnessed the event, quote, I remember everything from A to Z. It was something that looked like an egg that was moving slowly, slowly, slowly. Everyone was looking up and also there was some glitter coming down from the sky, silver glitter. We were astonished. We had never seen anything like it before. We were absolutely shocked. According to another witness, quote, they were moving very fast and then just stopped. It all lasted a couple of minutes. I would like to describe them as being like Cuban cigars. They just reminded me of Cuban cigars in the way they looked. While no investigation was able to get to the bottom of what happened in 1954, just like no investigation was able to get to the bottom of what happened in 1952 or 1950, or in so many of these UAP sightings, many witnesses, including the football players themselves, were on record saying, quote, in those years, everybody was talking about aliens. Everybody was talking about UFOs, and we had the experience. We saw them. We saw them directly, for real. Many remain intrigued by that mysterious material that fell from the sky, which many described as a silver glitter, just like what was seen in France. This substance, of course, is referred to as angel hair in the UAP community. Although we still know very little about angel hair today because it seems to disintegrate upon contact. While we continue to dig for answers, one thing remains certain to miss this mystery. For decades now, dating back to the early 50s and even before, pilots, professional football players, and civilians alike have all reported inexplicable aerial phenomenon that seem to defy the laws of physics. And if today, in the year 2020, we still don't know what these mysterious craft are, if we still can't explain this revolutionary technology, how then is it believable in the early 1950s that our military had this technology and was able to keep it secret for that long?